Though it is individually one of Whitman's more recognizable poems, it can be difficult to place when I heard the learned astronomer within the broader themes of Whitman's poetry. Appearing first in the post-Civil War 1871 edition of Leaves of Grass, learned astronomer strays from the topics of fever and lost commonly found in the post-war poems, instead focusing on the rejection of an academic lecture. But despite the differences in setting, learned astronomer shares a common theme with many of the post-war poems, struggling to cope with and comprehend the shattered unity of the United States. While other poems focus on visceral images, the vigor of war, or the heart-wrenching after-effects, learned astronomer focuses on the symbolic elements of Whitman's beliefs. The lecturer divides the stars just as generals and politicians divide the stars and the flag. However, beyond the walls of the lecture hall, the stars and the sky cannot be divided, just as America cannot truly be divided, in Whitman's eyes. Learned astronomer is Whitman's reaffirmation that cosmic unity cannot be so easily shattered as seen in the symbolism of the stars. In my introduction video, I discussed the ideas behind Walt Whitman's cosmos with a K, a concept which can be found in many of his works, and the particular importance of unity as a part of that cosmos. So this will just be a brief recap. If you haven't seen it yet, I highly recommend watching that video first, as it will give a lot of context to the ideas that will be discussed here. Anyway, the long and short of Whitman's cosmos is an all-encompassing oneness, which included man and animal, society and nature, even Earth and stars alike. Starting to see where learned astronomer comes in? This idea of being connected to every other person is an idea that permeates Whitman's works from his earliest days. To Whitman, this connection was both spiritual and physical, and deeply sacred. And that is also what made the American Civil War so deeply painful to Whitman. But what does all this have to do with the learned astronomer? Just two years after the end of the Civil War, the release of the 1867 edition of Whitman's Leaves of Grass marks the first appearance of When I Heard the Learned Astronomer. As I mentioned before, the Civil War had a huge effect on Whitman's psyche, and this can be seen in nearly all of the new poems of this edition. Though oft overlooked in this regard, Learned Astronomer is no exception. Within its lean verses, we find that the poem's narrator has unaccountable become tired and sick after watching the astronomer range and divide stars into mere numbered columns. This can be seen as a reflection of Whitman's own sickness, watching helplessly as America divides itself. To watch his beloved Americans senselessly slaughtering each other is a rejection of his life's cosmic philosophies made incarnate. But though he falters, he quickly stands again. As the narrator of the poem regains himself beneath the stars and sky, Whitman too begins to recover with two years of breathing space between him and the horrors of the Civil War. We must also consider the context of the period in which Whitman was writing this poem, even beyond the Civil War. First, let's talk about Alexander Humboldt's 1845 book Cosmos, which discusses the idea of the inherent connection between all things, be they earth, stars, or sky. This is an idea that seems to have deeply resonated with Whitman, as it can be found in his poems written throughout the years. Second, we must consider the Lyceum Lectures of astronomer O. M. Mitchell in 1848, which Whitman likely attended. Lyceums, which were peaking in popularity in the early to mid-1800s, were public lectures open to any and all members of the public. Thus, we must ask, is it possible that this poem should be taken as a complaint about it and similar lectures? Whitman's dislike of the traditional public education system was well known, and could have extended to this as well. However, this is unlikely, as Whitman is known to have written an editorial praising Mitchell's lecture material. Further still, it seems odd that Whitman would include such a petty complaint in with his poignant post-war poems. If he enjoyed the lectures, however, it is likely that the memories of them stuck with him even through the war, after which the astronomy lecture would have provided the perfect symbolic outlet for the division of the states. Now, with all that in mind, Let's see just how these ideas of recovering cosmic unity fit into a close reading of the learned astronomer. Focus on the first section of the poem marked in purple. Here we can see a knowledgeable and important person, the learned astronomer, dividing the stars and sorting them into columns. We can draw clear parallels between this and the division of the states, the stars on the flag, into columns of union and confederate. In the pink marked section of the poem, the poem's narrator suddenly becomes tired and sick in direct contrast to the applause coming from the attendees around him. 
While others applaud the division of the states as a necessary defense of their interests, Whitman cannot commit himself to the fervor of war. He has become unaccountably sick, for this measured division of the stars and states runs exactly perpendicular to his own vision of a united America. But finally, the blue section marks Whitman's recovery. When the narrator leaves the lecture and goes out amongst the stars, he is restored. Both the narrator and Whitman are reminded that cosmic unity cannot be so easily divided. It is a mystical force that brings people together beneath the cosmic stars and perfectly unites them. When I heard the learned astronomer is Whitman's attempt to renew his beliefs in the cosmos, a unity between all Americans, all people, and all things. Though he was deeply shaken by the things he saw during the Civil War, his belief in the adhesive brotherhood of man does not shatter, and the proof can be found in this poem.